at 8.32 a.m. on May 18, 1980, the unthinkable happened. A 5.1 magnitude earthquake shook the region, triggering the largest landslide in recorded history. The north face of Mount St. Helens collapsed, releasing a lateral blast of scorching hot gas, ash, and rock at supersonic speeds. This explosion was unlike anything ever documented before. May 18th, 1980. A day that changed the face of the Pacific Northwest forever. Mount St. Helens, a sleeping giant, awakened with a roar heard around the world. This is the story of nature's unimaginable power and the lessons humanity learned in its aftermath. The eruption not only reshaped the landscape, but also left an indelible mark on the people and science of the time. Mount St. Helens stood as a picture of tranquility in Washington State. Its snow-capped summit, a favorite among hikers and nature lovers. It was known for its beauty, attracting thousands of visitors each year. But beneath its serene exterior, forces were at work that would soon erupt in catastrophic fury. For decades, the mountain had shown little activity leading many to believe it was dormant. But scientists knew better. In the months leading up to the eruption, warning signs began to emerge. Small earthquakes rippled through the area, a clear indicator of magma movement beneath the surface. Then, a bulge started forming on the mountain's north flank, growing at an alarming rate of five feet per day. Despite these ominous signs, the scale of what was coming caught everyone off guard. At 8.32 a.m. on May 18, 1980, the unthinkable happened. A 5.1 magnitude earthquake shook the region triggering the largest landslide in recorded history. The north face of Mount St. Helens collapsed, releasing a lateral blast of scorching hot gas, ash, and rock at supersonic speeds. This explosion was unlike anything ever documented before. On the morning of May 18, I was driving up Interstate 5, um, headed up to the north side of Mount St. Helens with some parts and some batteries for our time-lapse cameras. And as I glanced over at Mount St. Helens, um, it was a beautiful blue um, sky day, and the mountain was sitting out there, and suddenly I saw this mushroom cloud go up above the volcano and climb rapidly up into the stratosphere. When I was down in the, in the room where the seismographs were at 8.32 in the morning, and I, I heard a sound, and I just looked over my shoulder, probably just a split second after the, um, earthquake, the, the big earthquake had started, and saw that this was something very large, larger than we'd seen before. Watched it for a few seconds just to confirm that. And then I ran upstairs to the next floor up to the radio uh, desk of the Forest Service and uh, called, uh, called Dave. And we couldn't get through, there was, there, was no, there was no answer. So I guess I had the realization right away that um, this was some kind of a tragedy. And uh, on the one hand, it was this huge, exciting and interesting magmatic eruption. And on the other hand, it was, I was pretty certain that something terrible had happened to Dave. So it was a, it was a, a strange day for me. It obliterated everything in its path, flattening forests destroying homes, and altering the landscape in seconds. The eruption column shot 80,000 feet 
into the sky. Spewing ash that darkened the skies for hundreds of miles. Entire communities were plunged into chaos as ash rained down like snow, coating cars, homes, and roads. The human toll of the Mount St. Helens eruption was devastating. 57 lives were lost, each with a story to tell. Among them was David Johnston, a dedicated volcanologist who had been monitoring the mountain closely. His final words, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it, became a haunting reminder of the risks scientists take in their pursuit of knowledge. Thousands of animals perished in the disaster, and over 230 square miles of land were reduced to a wasteland. Rivers were clogged with debris, causing floods and further destruction downstream. The economic impact was staggering, with losses estimated at over one billion dollars. Yet, amidst the devastation, acts of heroism and survival emerged, painting a picture of human resilience in the face of nature's wrath. In the years following the eruption, the area around Mount St. Helens became a natural laboratory for studying ecological recovery. The barren landscape, once thought lifeless, began to show signs of regeneration. Hardy plants like lupines took root, paving the way for other species to return. Wildlife slowly made a comeback, with elk, birds, and even fish repopulating the area. The recovery of Mount St. Helens is a testament to nature's resilience and adaptability. Scientists from around the world have studied this recovery process, gaining invaluable insights into how ecosystems rebuild after catastrophic events. It's a story of hope and renewal proving that life finds a way, even in the most unlikely circumstances. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was a wake-up call for volcanology and disaster preparedness. It led to significant advancements in monitoring technology including real-time seismic data collection and improved early warning systems. Today, scientists closely monitor active volcanoes worldwide, using lessons learned from Mount St. Helens to better predict and prepare for future eruptions. Mount St. Helens may have erupted in fury, but its story is one of resilience, of nature, science, and humanity's enduring spirit. Its legacy lives on, not just in the scarred landscape, but in the lessons it taught us about the planet we call home. As we look to the future, we must ask ourselves, how can we better coexist with these powerful natural forces. If you found this story fascinating, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more captivating explorations of history and nature. Share your thoughts below. What do you think we've learned from Mount St. Helens? <laughs>